Um, but let me play this audio. I want to know what everyone in here has to think about this audio that I'm about to play. Previous date that I've had. So, so let's do story time. So this is a story just about a previous date that I've had. Um, in the end, I really want to know if I'm wrong for thinking the way that I think. So let me know. Stay tuned, please. Okay, so I get there a little early, and I valet. Um, he's like a minute later than me, and I see that he parks across the street instead of choosing to valet. Um, I don't really question it because, you know, to each their own, whatever. And then we go and have our dinner. We end up ordering, um, like, three courses appetizer entree dessert we had wine i was really impressed by his palate um he didn't just stick to like the the typical things you know he was a little adventurous in what he likes to eat also it was the first day too and he brought me flowers i really did like that um they were red and white roses they were pretty pretty beautiful so we're getting ready to leave. Um, mind you, we didn't finish all of our food. So we both have leftover food um, and the flowers that he gave me. So we're walking to valet. And valet's like, okay, will that be cash or card? And I'm like, card. Okay. So the guy literally does not even attempt to take out his card or like reach in his pocket or anything. Mind you, I have flowers in a hand and I have my... Um, leftover food in the hand too so not only is he not even attempting to not pay for the valet he's also like completely unbothered with the fact that my hands are full and i mean i can't reach into my purse so literally the valet guy is like well somebody gotta pay so he takes my <laughs> he takes my flowers so i end up um reaching in my bag and paying for the valet because somebody gotta pay for it Mind you again, while we're having dinner, you know, we're laughing and joking. Everything's going so good. But I'm just so turned off that he didn't even attempt to try to pay for the valet. And I'm really just a little taken back because I don't think I've ever had to pay for my own valet um, coming from a date, like, ever. Like, that's kind of weird. And it kind of turned me off. So I called my friend afterwards. Uh, when I got in the car and I was on my way home, and I was like, just kind of explained everything the way I explained everything now. And I was like, girl, like, am I tripping that I'm upset that he didn't pay for my valet? Or like, what? Because this has never happened before. So, um, I don't know. <sighs> before you speak, before you speak, Joe. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Bree, I see you tapping the screen, love. You do not need to tap the screen, Bree. We on the backup page, and I'm just I'm just chilling tonight. I'm feeling really good, you know. I sat I sat at courtside tonight for the second time. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, before we get into this conversation, listen, keep keep praying, you know. Dedicate yourself to whatever it is that you're going after in life, and keep working hard. All right, because you can really do whatever it is that you want to do out here. I'm not no motivational speaker, but. You know, I'm, I'm not I don't get on here trying to inspire people, but I just want to let y'all know that like y'all can sit courtside at the basketball game too. y'all can go to whatever country, whatever hotel y'all want to go to. Y'all can do it, too. OK, so just make sure that you're working hard, though, because you have you have to work hard to do it. But um, June, mm. so you heard that audio, correct? I did. It's it's um, it's sad, June. Listen. Um, I coined a phrase. Um, mm -hmm. I call it the um, the airheaded, the airhead bigoted entitlement complex. I made that up myself. I literally made that up myself. Mm -hmm. Let me say it again for you: the mm -hmm. airhead bigoted entitlement complex. Okay. So, um, you know, I think a lot of women have this complex that I made up. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, for every woman, where they get it from is different, but. You know, I just think it's sad. You know, I, I I really, I love women, obviously. And I try my best to, like, take up for them. You know, as you know, I'm not like, I'm not like a, a man's man. I'm not all for men and against women. I just, you know, call stuff how I see it, keep it real. You know, I'm, I'm down the middle with everything. But, like, you know, I don't support the Passport Brothers. You know what I mean? I, I, there's a lot of, there's a lot of beautiful 
great black women here in America that, you know, don't fit whatever stereotype and are just overall good women. But, you know, when you hear a woman like the woman in this audio, you know, it, in a way, even if someone like myself, who's a man and I don't support the Passport Brothers, you know, you just, you just kind of understand like what these men are saying. You understand why they just don't even want to subject themselves to dealing with certain things. So this man, you know, initiated a date with her and, you know, we've talked like you're someone you want a man to like approach you and, you know, be the initiator of everything. So if I, if I said, June, I'm in your city, <laughs> let's go out on a date or whatever. Let's go to whatever restaurant, whatever the popping restaurant is in your city. We about to go there, have a good time, whatever. All on me. So I say, pull up at such and such time. You pull up at such and such time. And instead of, instead of, you know, parking across the street or parking where you could park for free, you take the onus upon yourself to park in valet because I don't know. You're just bougie. You just you just a bad B. You know, you got to park in valet. You can't park across the street like all the other regular people and park for free. You got to park. You got to park in valet like you the one. So I come out the car. Yeah, you mm -hmm. the one. I come out the car. You know, I greet you, give you a hug or whatever. I got, mm -hmm. I got beautiful flowers in my hand, some beautiful roses in my hand. You know, mm -hmm. I'm smelling good. I'm looking good. We go inside, you know. We get seated. We have a great dinner. The conversation is great, you know, the whole night. And now when it's time to go, I decide that I'm not going to pay for your, you know, valet or whatever. Is everything else about the date in vain at this point? Or how do you, how do you feel about it? How do you feel about what you heard her say in the audio? Because I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, June. As a man, uh -huh. when I hear stuff like that, that's just, it's given exactly what I said. It's airheaded, mm -hmm. bigoted entitlement complex. Like, so everything else that he did just is totally in vain now, simply because he didn't pay for your valet. So forget about the fact that he even initiated a date with you. Forget mm -hmm. about the fact that he brought you flowers. Forget about the fact that, you know, uh, the conversation was great. He paid for the food. He even got dessert. Whatever it is that you wanted, he made it. He made it happen for you. But simply because this man didn't pay the valet, you just want to throw the whole man away. You just want to throw the whole date away. How do you feel about what she said as a woman? I don't think she said she wants to throw the whole date away. She just was frustrated, and I think that if her expectations or her standards are, she wants a man to take care of everything when she goes on the date, then that's her that's her prerogative. She has the right to do that. So I wish I kind of would have heard the comments the friend had said when she called her. Kind of curious what the friend had said to her. But if that's what she wants, that's what it is. And, you know, I don't think there's no any need to name call Noble um, if that is what she likes. If she wants a man that pays for everything when she goes on a date, including valet, and that's what she wants. That's what she's going to get. All right. If you say so. But if if you were in her position, like, again, it, it, let's put oh, let's, so like, let's, let's put, let's, let's put it on you. If, okay. if you decided if you decided not to park across the street for free, and you decided that you want to park in valet because, again, you just the one. You got to park in valet. You just so special. And, mm -hmm. you know, after the date or whatever, when y'all are walking out, and, mm -hmm. you know, obviously it's just like common courtesy for him to, like, walk the woman to her car, right? So if he, your car is in valet and he mm -hmm. decides not to pay for your valet, are you going to feel some type of way about it? Um... I will say I, I'm not going to say I would be mad, but I would be kind of mm, questioning things like, OK, a simple valet like I would because for me, I I'm kind of the same way. Like I like for a man, I like to feel secure with the man. Like I like when I go on a date that he takes care of everything. So that does include like valet. 
And I won't say that I will throw him all the way because he did, you know, get and I I hope that the the roses and everything were her favorite flower. You know, he took care of the male. So I wouldn't throw him all the way. But it would just be a discussion that I would just have with him. But yeah, I, would, I wouldn't I would be mad. But I would be a little like, hmm. I wonder why he didn't do that. Because he obviously didn't want to pay for the valet because he didn't see the value in it. And that's fine. That's his prerogative. But if you're taking a young lady out and you're that type of man where you're like, um, I want to take care of everything because I'm taking her out on the date. Now, I don't see why he didn't would, wouldn't want to pay for my ballet. But I wouldn't throw him away. I think it just I, needs a conversation. 